Hello, my name is Mark Ells from Stick and Rotor Studios, and uh, this is an addendum to the Xcamera 2.4 tutorial number one. Uh, there were a couple of things I had meant to show you guys in tutorial one that I omitted, and um, now that uh, they've been up for a little bit, I've been getting some questions from people, and I thought it'd be a good idea to clear up some of this, uh, some of the stuff uh, right before we go on to too many of the other tutorials. So one of the, a couple of these are the things I kind of like to cover. Uh, Pop-out windows, uh, copy and paste camera sets, and methods of adding uh, cameras. And the methods of adding cameras are the various uh, areas where I think most people struggle a little bit because there's a couple of ways you can do it and they, they've got their uh, gotchas. Um, so without any further ado, let's get right into explain and take a look at uh, these three topics. Okay, so here we are in, uh, in X-Plane, and let's uh, cover the very first topic, which are pop-out windows. I probably should have showed this to you in the first tutorial, but because I was recording off of one screen, it uh, really didn't make sense to do it. But for those of you who are developing your camera files, if you have a secondary monitor, um, you might find that it's actually easy easier to pop out the control panel um, and put it on a second monitor. That way it's not in your way as you're trying to manipulate the uh, the cameras. So first off, let me just show you how you do that. Um, to begin with, in order to pop it out, the control panel has to be trans has to be solid. So if, you, if it's coming up like this where it's translucent, you can sort of see through it, just hit this solid background checkbox. And once it's a solid background checkbox, then you could use this little overlapping square uh, icon up here in the upper right hand corner. If you just click that, what it will do is it'll pop out the control panel to a top level operating system window. And now what you could do is you could drag that around and you could put it on a secondary monitor, um, thereby giving you a full view of your X-Plane um, you know, cockpit or, or your external views as you try to set these cameras up. Uh, to pop it back in, all you have to do is just check this, uh, undo the solid checkbox, it'll move it back inside, and then if you want, you can bring it back like that, and it'll, it'll stay in the X-Plane window. Uh, now, the other thing is you could do the same thing with the mini control panel. Uh, this isn't quite as useful when you're setting up cameras, but you may find it useful when you're flying, if you really want to be able to select cameras pretty quickly without having to pop this thing up while you're flying. And to do that, all you have to do is come over here and undock it. And once it's undocked, it then turns into kind of a floating window. And what I can do is use this little overlapping checkbox here to pop it out. And now I can move that over to another monitor. And, uh, you know, that way you can kind of you know, pick your cameras the way you, uh, you know, the way you want to do it. Okay. To push it back in, just click it back to docked mode and it'll come back in and be docked. Uh, one other thing I didn't show you is, is you can change the height of this. Uh, you know, by default, it's going to come up to something like this, but if you actually end up with a lot of cameras, um, you might actually end up with a little bit of a scrolling window in here, and if you will, if you want to, you can make this bigger. And obviously, if it's undocked and popped out, you can make it as big as you want for the monitor that you, that you've got. Okay, so that covers uh, pop-out windows. The next thing I wanted to cover is uh, copy and paste camera sets, and we're going to actually use this, um, you know, as a as a way of. Uh, temporarily copying what we've got and then making a bunch of changes and seeing if we like them. If we don't like it, we could paste it back. Um, and it's similar to doing a save and a restore. So up here on the edit um, menu, there's a copy camera set. And what this is going to do is it's going to copy all of your categories and all of the cameras within those categories to an in-memory location. Now, just to show you how this works, I could come up here to file and I could say, give me a new aircraft camera file. Um, this is going to basically wipe out the camera file that we had and create the single cockpit category with a single pilot view. So I'll confirm that. And just to show you, I could paste it back in again. Just come up and do paste camera set. And it comes back. You can also use this uh, as a way of pasting a camera set between uh, planes that are kind of close to each other in size. 
So let's take as an example here. I've got a camera set for the Cessna 172 steam gauge. Suppose I would like to copy this camera set and paste it into the Cessna 172 G1000. And uh, one of the things you need to keep in mind with X camera is, is each plane variant, uh, a plane that basically has a separate ACF file in the laminar aircraft directory, you need to have a separate camera file for. Um, so you know, generally what you would do is you'd go into each plane, you set up your camera sets, could be a lot of work. If you have planes that are not too far apart in size and their cockpit, layout, cockpit layouts are kind of similar, then you could use this technique okay, to just copy camera sets around. So I think I still got that copied. I'll just do it again to be on the safe side. And now I'm going to come up and I'm going to pick the Cessna G1000 plane. And then I'm just going to come up to X camera and I'm going to enable it for the very first time. And you get this little message that says it's creating a new camera file for you. And you can see that it's just got the one cockpit and the one pilot view. Now what I could do is come up and say paste camera set. Now I want to talk to you a little bit about this checkbox here, autocorrect cockpit cameras. Now, we're not going to have a problem with this plane because the G1000 Cessna 172 and the Steam Gauge Cessna 172, everything is really, I mean, maybe other than the six pack and the things like that that you're going to have to change, the size of the plane is the same. Um, you know, where the seats are located and, and whatnot. But if I were trying to take this camera set and maybe pass, paste it into a Baron 58 or to another plane that was kind of a GA plane, but maybe a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller, uh, X camera can at least attempt to try to fix up the cockpit cameras and get them so that they're relatively close to one another. And it does that by looking at what the original pilot camera looked like and where it was and where the pilot camera is in the plane that you're pasting it into. And it just looks at what the relative dif difference is between the, those positions and tries to fix up all of the other cameras that are within roughly a meter or so of the pilot camera, which would be pretty much all of your cockpit cameras. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, even though I really don't probably need to. Now, one thing about this is it's not perfect. It's using a little bit of fuzzy logic. It gets kind of close, but for the most part, if you're pasting a camera set into a different plane, you're going to have to fuss around with the cameras and, and adjust them for what you want. Not to mention the fact that, you know, frankly, some of them simply aren't going to make sense. Like a, a, a six pack for a G1000 may not be exactly what we want to be looking at. Uh, same with the, the GPS. So these will probably need to be adjusted. Switches, I'll bet you that will match pretty closely. Let's see. Well, I, well, it's close. I mean, this has got a little different layout than than uh, you know a normal steam gauge Cessna 172, but it's got as close, and we can make the adjustments we want. So that kind of shows you what you could do with the copy and paste uh, camera set. And and by the way, there's also a copy and paste camera if you wanted to do this with an individual uh, camera. Um, the camera sets are are most likely the more uh, valuable thing, okay, to to do it with. Okay, so. I think what I'm going to do just for safety sake because I'm going to go back to my steam gauge Cessna 172. And what I want to do is talk about creating cameras. Um, in the last tutorial, I showed you how to create cameras with this enable temporary positioning on. But what I probably really didn't do is explain to you what's really going on in the covers with this enable temporary positioning and, and how it can impact you know, how you're trying to create cameras. So let me see if I can walk you through it. First off, let's come up here and let's just set this to a new aircraft camera file. So all we have is this one, you know, camera in here. And, and just to make things simple, I'm going to go ahead and do a save all so that we know we've got that set. Okay. So with enable temporary positioning turned on, um, this camera right now, because I did a save all, knows what its last position is, okay? If I want to create a new camera, it's pretty easy for me to simply come over here right now, move the camera to where I want, you know, and maybe I'll make this a co-pilot, you know, camera. Um, now the way a create works 
is when you come up and you say create new camera, it's always going to create the camera from the current position of the camera. And the only reason it does not mess up this pilot camera is because we last saved it when it was, you know, frankly over here. And if I, if I click on it again, I think it'll, it'll actually go back. Its last saved was over here. So even though I moved it, as long as I don't do another save all, this camera is still thinks it's back over here on the left hand side of the plane. So doing an add added camera two to category cockpit is a fairly safe thing. At this point now, camera two, which I'll just rename it so we can keep our wits about us here. We'll call this copilot. This guy's now saved to this position, right? Um, and I can go back and forth between the two of them. Now all of that worked okay because of the fact that I had saved um, the cameras okay. Once I get them in the position I want them in, using this technique I have to do a save all. Otherwise it can get confused. And let me keep, sort of give you an example of that. Let me delete this guy. Let me go back over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this added camera two to category cockpit I'm going to rename it and then I'm going to do something interesting here I'm going to move it down a little bit and then I'm go go. Oh, you know what? I don't like the name of it. Now, interesting. I didn't do a save all. Where do you think this this guy really thinks the last position of this copilot camera was? It's going to be up here where it was when I created it. If I click on it right now, bang, it's going to go back up there. Because it's all based upon where it was when you created it and where it was when you saved it last. So when you've got this enable temporary positioning on, you kind of have to keep your wits about you as to, you know, what state is it in and when did I save it last. Um, and hopefully that kind of clears up, you know, the way that works. Now, if I try to create cameras without this on, now I've got kind of a different ball of wax, okay? I'm going to actually do a save all just to make sure. Now, if I tried to use that same approach, where I just move the camera. What's happening is, is this camera has no idea where its original position was because I basically shut this off. It's not keeping track of it anymore. It's, it does know I saved it here, but if I start moving this camera, I've actually changed the position of the pilot view, right? And when I create a new camera, it's not gonna be able to restore this to its last position because it's not bothering to keep track of it. Let me give you an example. If I come up here and I say add to end. Camera two to category cockpit. Now what actually ended up happening here is this pilot view in this camera are exactly the same position. You see that? And that's because without that on, as soon as I moved it over to the right, it now thought the pilot view it changed. And as soon as I created a new camera, it created a new one from the position I'm at, but it left the old, it left the last one where I moved it to last. So it, it, can, it can get pretty confusing pretty easily. So if you're trying to create cameras without this on, let me show you the technique you're supposed to use to do that. Let's move this, uh, maybe I can actually just do a restore. There we go, we got it back to where it was. Um, and that is, by the way, if you haven't saved it, you're lucky enough you can get it back to where it was. If you're going to try to create cameras without enable temporary positioning on, the right technique to do it is is don't move the camera. First create it. Added camera two to category cockpit. Then move it. Then save it. See? Now, suppose I want to make another one. Don't move it and then add it. Without this on, 
it's not going to remember where this where this was. So if I want to add a new one, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add it. Added camera three to category cockpit. And save it. And they're all working. So the general technique is with enable temporary positioning off, the right technique is add the camera, then move it to where you want it and save it. Add the camera, move it to where you want, rename it, save it. And I, I recommend you always, once you have a camera, a new camera where you want it, do a save all so that, so that it remembers it and you don't lose it. In the situation where you've got enable temporary positioning on, you get the camera to where you want. And let's actually just do that again, okay, so you can see how that works. Do a save all just to get us in a good spot. So with this, I did a save all, it knows where the pilot camera is. In this case, it's safe to basically go over and move it to where I want. Get it positioned to where you want it. Add it. Camera two to category cockpit. Immediately change the name. Save it. As soon as I save it, this now knows where the co-pilot camera is. Particularly if I moved it, you know, moved it around again. Um, you know, let's do another one. Okay, I can easily move it to another position. Let's move it over here. We'll go down. Add it. Added camera three to category cockpit. And then save all. Okay, so hopefully that clears it up. I, I realize it's not as intuitive as you might like to have it. And a lot of it's just got to do with the fact that this enable temporary positioning, which is a pretty powerful feature, for being able to allow you to look around the cockpit and then reset the camera quickly back to where it was as soon as you come back to it. Unfortunately, it can cause a little bit of confusion when you're creating cameras, but I think once you get used to this, um, and just pick whichever technique you want, um, you know, whether it is a, uh, you know, create the camera and then move it uh, and, and set it up the way you want it and then save it, or whether what you do is you always have enable temporary positioning on, make sure the camera that you're on is in a good spot and saved, then you can move it and you can add a new one. So hopefully that answers a, a few of the questions and clears up a little bit of the, um, the confusion that could be caused by this. Okay, great. And uh, now we can move on to uh, the next uh, tutorial.